You are listening to the SDSU Football Podcast, presented by the East Village Times with your hosts, Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison. Welcome, listeners, to another episode of the SDSU Football Podcast. I am your host, Andre Hagverdian, and will be joined shortly by Paul Garrison. This is episode 69, and it is our Mother's Day special. On today's episode, we were able to talk to a mother-son combo in the Aztec family, wide receiver Makai Shaw, who had a breakout year in 2022 and went from a walk-on to a scholarship athlete. And his mother, Adria Shaw, who uh, has supported uh, Makai through his journey in football uh, as a walk-on athlete to a scholarship athlete at San Diego State. We, it was great chatting with both of them. We interviewed them separately, uh, Makai first, and then his mother, Adria, uh, later on. And it was a really good insight into the family, uh, who Makai is, who uh, his family is, and I think you guys will definitely enjoy it. Last year, Makai's breakout season he caught 29 passes for 349 yards and three touchdowns. He definitely uh, developed a great relationship with Jalen Maiden once Jalen took over as a starting quarterback for San Diego State, which kind of propelled the offense and Makai's role in the second half of the season. Uh, let's get to our interview with Makai, and then uh, we'll roll into our interview with uh, his mother, Adria, right after that. Hope you guys enjoy it. We want to welcome wide receiver Makai Shaw to the SDSC Football Podcast. How are you doing today? Doing good. Thank you for having me. We appreciate you taking the time. This no for doubt. This Excited. Special, special Mother's Day episode. Um, yeah. Before we get into football, we have a couple. We, we Usually we ask these questions towards the end, but we thought we'd switch it up for this interview and ask in the beginning your favorites, I guess. So what's your favorite food? My favorite food? Um, without a doubt, I like Japanese barbecue food the best. How did that how, how did that become Where, your favorite food? Yeah. Um, yeah, there was one time I have some uh some friends of mine who are uh their mom is Japanese. And um there's a spot in Scripps Ranch that's called Yukaku that we had gone to one time and just fell in love with it. And ever since then it's been my favorite spot. What what does one order when they get Japanese barbecue? Nothing but just all types of different types of beef, different types of huh. beef. Put it on the grill and you grill it yourself there. Um, it's already already got a bunch of sauce on it and whatnot. So it's always always great when I go there. No, oh, sounds incredible. Is that the one that's behind the movie theater by the 15th freeway? That's similar. That's uh yeah, it actually no, it is that one. It is that one. It's like right around the other side of the freeway, that little shopping center right there with the Trader Joe's. So I they opened up a, uh, another location downtown. Yeah, I heard about that one too. Yeah, I've been there. That's, a, that's actually, as a non-native San Diegan, Andre, that's pretty, like, being able to just to pop out where a random yeah. Japanese restaurant is in Scripps Ranch. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> well, I lived I lived in Mira Mesa, right? Oh, uh, gotcha. Um, and that's, I've been there. I know I know that area a little bit, just from living there. Clearly. Uh, what about your favorite movie or TV show? Well, I when it comes to movie... I'd say the, the only movie that I really, I don't really watch movies too often. My favorite for sure, definitely the Men in Black series. I like all of those. It's going to be the third one. Um, TV show, I mainly watch anime. But um, if I'm just throwing out there, I do like The Office a lot too. There you go. I One of the coolest things that I got to do this year is show my kids Men in Black, the original. And they like they like me and everything already, but it, it took it to a next level. They were like, how have, how have you been keeping this from me my whole life? So they, it was, it was like one of those days I was like, my wife and I looked at each other and we're like, okay, today's the day. And they, they, they couldn't believe that such greatness existed. Yeah. I'm always glad that my dad put that one on for me when I was younger. <laughs> what about favorite musical artist or group? Um, my favorite musical artist is Rod Wave. Rod Wave for sure. Yeah, he, he's the one I've been listening to the past couple of years. 
We've gotten that answer a few times. So we have, we have. We have. What about when you're not playing football? Uh, favorite hobby? Favorite hobby? Um, I don't really have one specifically that's like a clear cut above the rest, but um, I do like to just relax, watch some anime, I'll play some basketball, do golf sometimes. Yeah, I don't really have one that's clear cut above the rest, but there's just a couple that I do. Uh, and then favorite professional athlete? Professional athlete, definitely Kawhi Leonard. He's, he's my favorite for sure. He's my favorite for a little while now. I just like the way he conducts himself and always love when watching him on the court too. Watching him play is is amazing. The problem is just not having him on the court, right? The injuries, yeah. the injury bug has really uh, hurt him for sure. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a Clippers fan. I got a Clippers shirt on right now too. Oh, so. there you go. There you go. Yeah, Andre, this, this was supposed to be a positive podcast like you don't have to bring up the injuries bro i mean it's just you know come on <laughs> yeah. what are you majoring in at, at san Diego state and when will you have your degree done i'm uh, majoring in biology and my degree should be done spring of 2024 but it depends on if i can get all the all the classes required done i may have to do an extra semester but i'm not sure why you biology know. that was the only thing i really found interesting in high school and i just thought you know i might as well take it in biology. I was originally majoring in zoology because I you know, wanted to maybe work with animals, but switched it back to biology because I just like the study of life in general. Huh. Like at what, at what level interests you the most? Um, right now, I'm looking towards going into healthcare, like uh, nursing, and uh, I'm probably going to do a nursing program after I graduate. Very cool. Very cool. You mentioned Kawhi is your favorite professional athlete, but in terms of maybe wide receivers. And was there a certain wide receiver you studied and you kind of molded your game after? To be honest, I'm not sure because I I was more watching, um, growing up, I was more of a, I like watching DBs, you know, uh, mm -hmm. safeties and corners and whatnot. But right now, I gotta say, I do, I did like watching um, Calvin Johnson. And um, so I, I always used to like watching Randy Moss highlights too. Love it, man. So we we know the stories. You walk on from Scripps Ranch, come in as a DB, right? And and you make a big leap in the second half. You earn a scholarship. You know, when you look back on this last season, you know, how would you evaluate the season? And, and did it quite go as expected for you? Um, I got off to a bit of a rough start, I'd say. Uh, I just wasn't really feeling like myself out there, especially getting onto the field. At some point during the season, I just said, you know, I got to lock it in. My biggest issue is my consistency. So I wanted to work on uh, being consistent with my hands, consistent with my routes, and uh, just taking was taking the opportunities that's given to me. You know, um, I got I was able to, I, I got a lot more opportunities when Moose switched to quarterback, and Coach Horton became the OC. That's when like I was able to get a, a couple more opportunities, and I just took what was given to me. Um, I feel like we as a team we definitely should have had a better season. I don't want to sit here and say I had a good season. Uh, because our team didn't have a great season. Um, definitely not something that uh, the Aztecs should really hold them up, that hold that standard to. So, uh, yeah, I think just I want to do what's best for my team. So as long as the team's doing good, I'm doing good. Great answer. Uh, we we had the, the the opportunity and the pleasure to talk with Devon Celestine recently. Um, and he, he also just got a scholarship a couple of weeks ago, and he, he was talking about – you know, just the different summer jobs and the things that he had to do as a walk on to be able to make ends meet and, and do what was uh, to make, you know, less of a burden to his family, et cetera. Um, and, and we know you did the same thing. I think you, you mentioned working at Home Depot and Devon just spoke about not having to do those jobs and how that allows him to kind of focus on football even more than he was doing before. It, it have, is that the same for you? And and how did, you know, how has that transition for you um, been going or have you seen any effects of it? Yeah, it's, it's definitely the same. I'd say um, it's different when I have to, don't have to work at Home Depot all summer again, um, just take some of the burden off. Uh, now I can really, develop some of my the skills I didn't really get a chance to develop in the past because I wouldn't really have time because I'd be working a lot. Um, so now I can really focus on what I need to focus on uh, in the summer. Instead of, say, we'd have a workout, and then after the workout, I'd come home, take a nap, and then head straight to work. But now <laughs> I have the entire day to 
work on what I would, what I need to work on, maybe um, get ahead on school or some other stuff like that. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely the same. I'd say. What did you do at Home Depot? I was a, like a delivery associate. So people would order stuff online and then I'd package it or um, a little bit later down the line, I got my forklift license. So I was bigger corporations to order like large amounts of lumber and whatnot. And I would just package that up. So I don't know if you said it or not, but in my mind, when I, when I thought about it, I thought about you driving a forklift. <laughs> no, I don't know why. No. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun driving the forklift. It made my job a lot easier. So last year you were, you know, essentially the number three wide receiver, right? Behind Jesse and Tyrell. Both of those guys are now in the NFL. And, you know, at least with the post-spring depth chart, it looks like you're slotting in, you know, as that primary number one guy. So how does that change your approach heading into this coming season? And and what changes are you looking to make uh, to make sure you uh, are ready? Um, well, I just want to be uh, consistent. I just want to be the most consistent I can be. Uh, maybe if it's like a big third down or a big play in the game, you know, uh, I want Moose to feel comfortable coming to me or the coaches to feel comfortable coming to me. I want to uh, be able to lead as well, lead the younger guys in the room because me and Breon are really the only ones that have a lot of game experience. So it's going to be new for a decent amount of them. I'm not really sure how Coach Krause is going to do the rotations yet in game, but um, if uh, if it comes down to uh, switching and putting some of the younger guys in, I want to be able to you know help them out through that. That's really just my biggest thing is just getting the, the coaches and my teammates to trust me more. Trust me with uh, more responsibilities like they do with Jesse and Tyrell. You mentioned uh, Coach Krause. What was it like going through spring camp with kind of a new voice leading uh, the wide receivers? Um, well, I'm not really sure how it was for my teammates, but for me at least, um, I'm, I'm, I don't really know how to say it, but Coach Krause, uh, he's, he took things like step by step, very basic, um, mm-hmm. down to the fundamentals, very fundamentals, because he didn't know how much we knew. Yeah. And he took it step by step. And the, each day we were with him, you know, the more he learned about us, the more we learned about him. So things got easier. He's a good, I think he's a good coach. Um, he definitely knows what he's doing. We just got to uh, build more trust, learn more about each other. And I think honestly, it, it'll be a good run with, uh, with him. You, you also mentioned uh, about just the wide receivers, maybe not being as experienced not having the the in-game uh, snaps and production. You know, a lot of people might look at the wide receiver unit this year as maybe not one of the strengths of the team, right? And maybe how the passing game might struggle. How do you guys as a group make sure that's not the case? Well, we're only as strong as our weakest link. So it's important to keep everybody going, everybody going fast, everybody knowing the playbook, everybody playing confident. I say that's most important because if we're not confident in ourselves, then other people aren't going to be confident in us. So... I always got to keep making plays, keep make the plays that come to us. I'd say that's the most important because they're only going to go to us more. We're only going to get more opportunities if we make the ones that we get first. So for our coaches, for um, other players to start trusting the whole wide receiver group, it's really going to start with us making the simple plays and the plays that come to us first. Oh, this is the uh, Mother's Day episode. So I was texting your mom, setting up uh, time for the interview with her. And I jokingly said that we were going to have we were going to talk to you first and that you were going to give us all the dirt on her. And she shot back right away. And she's like, that kid does not have any dirt on me. So I took that as a challenge and and kind of like she gave us permission, you know, for you to be honest. So so what do you got, man? What's what's the dirt you got on moms? No dirt. No <laughs> dirt at all, man. She clean. She's helping me <laughs> No dirt at all. <laughs> so tell me tell me about your mom man tell us about her and and um just a little bit about you know what she's meant for your journey man she's great and she had me at a young age um i know it was a struggle for her so i can only really appreciate all she's done for me ever since she was she was young honestly she's constantly putting hours in work uh growing up school lunch boxes everything yeah she's been a big influence on my life when i grow up i want to be just as productive as her and, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing now just so I can take some stress off of her and she can focus on my younger siblings in their college. Incredible, man. And last year, your your family was generous enough to invite me to uh, one of the pregame tailgates. And uh, it was a great time, great people, great food, man. But they are there every game, hours before, celebrating you. 
And, you know, what, what, what does it mean to you to, to be able to have that, that kind of family support? It means a lot. Um, it really makes me just, it, ma- it makes me keep going for them. You know, um, if I can make them proud, that's what really makes me happy. Uh, I know that I have fans no matter what in the stands and I can always look up to them. So I'm going to just keep making my plays, keep doing what I got to do to make them proud. From, from your perspective, just in general, what do mothers of football players have to deal with to support their son's dreams on the field? Yeah, it's tough. You know, uh, football is not the safest sport. So I'm sure they're constantly worried. My mom is constantly worried because, you know, I've been hurt a couple of times in the past. Worried about injuries, worried about playing time, and probably most important, worried about uh, their son having fun and enjoying the game. So, um, yeah, I, I know my mom. She worries for me a lot, and I try to do my best to lessen those worries. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be – it's tough for them knowing um, – uh, no one, you know, the degree of difficulty of the game and what it takes, especially at this level. Obviously, we talked about you last year. You were into scholarship. Prior to that, you're a walk on for three years, almost three years. So, was that how difficult of a decision it was it to keep playing football uh, and keep getting the family support so that you can continue to play football? Yeah, it was tough because uh, I I still lived at in Scripps, so. Every morning, I'd have to drive 20 minutes and stay down here. I'd oftentimes be napping in my car just because I had to wait in between classes and practice. But, you know, it's, it's really the support from my, my parents that kept me going because I, um, I knew I could make them proud. I knew, I knew if I kept working, I'd eventually get the scholarship. And I wanted to take that burden off my mom so she wouldn't have to keep uh, getting loans out and whatnot. So I knew that I would be able to make her proud. And I stay confident in myself. That's part of the biggest thing. Are you, did you move out? What's your, are you going to, how's that situation? Yeah, I moved out um, with some people I knew from Scripps uh, midway through fall camp last year. I saved up some money from Home Depot so I could pay rent for a couple months until I could start working again. But, um, because at the time I didn't know I was going to get the scholarship. Right. But yeah, now I'm going to be using the, the money to pay some rent and live with my teammates. I remember talking to you after practice, right after you got the scholarship, about how you 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 were surprised, you weren't expecting it, but obviously your goal and your dream was to get there. At any point, were you thinking that this is not going to happen, or maybe after your breakout, you're thinking, okay, if I don't get it this semester, I might get it next year. Yeah, I knew I'd have a chance uh, if I just kept working because I was I felt myself progressing gradually getting better at the game understanding more especially the more time I had I spent on the field in the game the more the more comfortable I felt so and I knew um Jesse and Tyrell were most likely going to be gone after the year so I'd have a chance then as well to prove myself even more because um I was the only one really with game experience so I felt as long as I just kept my head down and kept working you know eventually I get what I uh, I wanted Got one last little part for this man for uh, your mom's birthday. You got a scholarship, right? Um, she called it the, the the best birthday gift ever. Now it's Mother's Day, so you can thank us later le- later for this because you know you don't have to get her anything now because <laughs> right you did this interview. So the the, the podcast is yours. Um, your mom's not going to hear this until Mother's Day. So what message w- would you have for her? Man, I don't even know where to start. Um, but mom, thank you very much for everything you've ever done for me. I really appreciate it. You keep me going. Kaya keeps me going. I'm glad, you know, I can always, I always hear you in the stands. Glad you're always supporting me. Yeah. And I'm going to try to plan something for you this, uh, Mother's Day because I don't usually, but I'm going to try to do something. So believe me with that. Okay. Thank you, man. Great interview. And, you know, I just just really appreciate you in the middle of finals being able to find time to to come and talk with us. Thank you for having me. It was a, it was a pleasure. Thank you. We'll see you on the field in, in the fall. Yes, sir. Have a good night. Thank you. you too. Thank you. We want to welcome Adria Shaw, mother of Makai Shaw, to the SDSC Football Podcast. How are you doing tonight? Woo, woo. I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing great. Doing well, doing well. Thank you. You are obviously the mother of Makai Shaw, wide receiver for San Diego State. Makai is kind of new up up until maybe the end of last year. Aztec Nation really didn't know who Makai was, you know, until he kind of came on the scene 
towards the end of the season. You know, for those listening, how would you describe how who your son is? I definitely think he's like a silent leader. He doesn't have a lot to say, um, but he is very, he's very humble, but he leads by example and he's always been that way. So he's not one to talk a lot. He doesn't talk trash to other kids. He's not one of those that is a showboater. Um, he goes out in the field and he does what he needs to do. And, and that's both on the field and in the classroom. Like he does that. So he, he does what he needs to do to get it done with no complaints ever, like ever. He, he never complains. And that's just kind of how he's always been his entire life. Yeah. I mean, just from talking to him a few times, you could tell he's soft spoken, quiet, humble. Where does he get that from? Is that your side of the family? Is um, that his dad? You, you, know, you know, what's funny is he's actually not. So he was for a while and my husband is super introverted and he um, was like that for a while, but um, we took his brother out to celebrate his birthday a couple weeks ago in April, his middle brother, who's 19. And I kid you not, I could not get Makai to shut up. Like he, <laughs> he is, when he gets around the right people, he is a jokester and he is funny, um, but he's, he's quiet. I, I it's, it's hard to explain. Like he's quiet in certain aspects of his life and other aspects. He's really not. And it's funny because he really was super quiet for a long time. And just recently in the last like year and a half, two years, he's really kind of gotten to be a little more outgoing, which is definitely different than what we're used to seeing him as. So the outgoing part definitely is for me, the introverted part from his father. Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, you know, he's, he's a scholarship athlete. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, Thank huge. you. I mean, have you noticed anything different about his approach? Anything that, that um, has stood out that's been maybe a little different since he, since he got the, um, that award? So you, I don't know if you guys are aware he fractured his clavicle in the last game of the season in the bowl game. Um, I don't know if you guys know that or if anyone knows that. And that was a re-injury of a fractured clavicle he had. Oh, so nobody knows. Okay. So, <laughs> so he actually broke his, <laughs> sorry, surprise. <laughs> um, he broke his clavicle in 2018 when he was a junior in high school. And that kind of, um, halted a lot of things for him, um, with regards to, um, recruiting, et cetera, et cetera. Cause he was out for the remain pretty much all of his junior year with the recovery and he actually, he had a plate and screws in there and he refractured it in the bowl game in Hawaii. And um, so I think at that point when he did, I wasn't there, my husband was there. And I think at that point he had surgery again, like three days after Christmas and he was on a very, very short recovery. They rehabbed him phenomenally. And I think at that point he was kind of like, listen, like I already know, like they scholarship me, here I am with this in serious injury. I have to really step it up. And I did not make it down to any of the spring ball games. So I'm glad you guys covered that because I didn't know anything about how he was doing, or not the the games, I'm sorry, the practices. I don't know how he was doing. I was kind of following everything along. And Makai sees, he loves playing football. He kind of sees it as a job. He's like, I have one job to do on the field. And I think that now he's a scholarship kid. He completely understands and knows like his his role is different. And honestly, like I feel like I feel more pressure than he does. Like he's always been that kind of kid where he's like, yeah, I'll just go out and do whatever I, I need to do. And for me, I'm like, Oh my God, I have so much pressure. Like my son has to perform. Like he's a scholarship kid now. And he's like, mom, I got it. Like, I'm not worried about it. I grind every day. I do what I need to do and I'm not worried about it. And I'm, uh, I don't necessarily know that he's any different since he got his scholarship. I think he just knows like, this is, this is my role and I have to step up into it, um, even bigger than before. So we, we asked him a very similar question and his response was exactly the same response that the coaches give us when we ever ask about like next steps for a player. And so he emphasized, which is what consistency. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, what oh. I need to do is I need to just make sure that I'm consistent. And the fact that like that his mindset is there, you know, I think is is pretty special. Um, but heading into the season, you know, and and with with the practices that that you know he had, and where he is at the depth chart, you know, there's looking to be a big jump in his responsibility. Um, two of the you know leading receivers are gone to the NFL. Um, how do you think he will do in that role? And then you know you mentioned him 
being more of a, more vocal with the right people and and being able to be vocal and be a leader in that room. Uh, well, first of all, congrats to the kids that um, got signed as uh, the free agents. Okay. I've been following them this entire time, and I'm super excited for them. Um, I so again, like I don't think Makai is vocal verbally. I do think that he is a leader silently on the field and by his actions. And he's always been that way. He's one of those kids that's never challenged a coach. He um, always goes out and he just performs and does exactly everything. He's, he's taken in hands down every year he's played football um, prior to SDSU. Cause I don't even know if they give this award at SDSU, but the most coachable kid and MVP every year. So um, I think that the way that he leads is definitely by example. I definitely feel like he has some big shoes to fill. Um, at those wide, those wide out receiver, the, or the wide receiver starting positions, I think he'll step up to the plate. Well, I honestly do. Again, I'm nervous for him because I'm his mom. So I want him to perform well. I mean, I'm, I, again, I'm more nervous than he is, but I think that when the challenge is presented, he will do phenomenal. When uh, Makai got his scholarship back, I think in the November, <laughs> I spoke to you for an article that I was writing. And, you know, one of the themes about that was obviously um, the support he's gotten at San Diego State, especially from Coach Cooper. Um, obviously, Coach Cooper has meant a lot to him and to the family. Now that he's moved on and there's a new coach, you know, how Makai went through spring camp, built a new relationship with him, and he talked about that. But have you had a chance to talk to Coach Krause? How do you, how do you, how do you go about building that rapport with the new coach? <laughs> So it's hard. So first of all, he got scholarshiped on my birthday. So happy birthday to me. Woo woo. Um, I've only talked to Coach Kraus once. And to be honest, it was actually about Makai's brother, um, about the potential about coming to SDSU because his younger brother, his middle brother does play currently. And so we talked about that. I, I didn't want to bring up Makai. Um, I feel that as a parent, I don't I don't need to talk to, to them about my son. You know, he's almost 21. He's been at SDSU for almost for three years. And I feel that if Makai, Makai's an adult and if there's any issues or any concerns or anything like that, then that's something that he needs to take it upon himself with his coach. I did ask him, what do you think about the new coach? Do you miss coach Coop? And, you know, he was very, um, he loves coach Coop. All the wide receivers loved coach Coop and they were very sad when he left. And he did say that for weeks after, um, Coach Coop left. He reached out to them and he wanted to check in to see how they're doing. He was the only coach that reached out to Makai the day of his surgery when he broke his clavicle and he called me and um, he means a lot to us. So I'm, I'm sad that he went. Um, I'm happy for him that he found his, a new home at UNLV. I'm very excited for him for there, but I did ask him, how do you feel about coach Krause? And he said, he's a good guy. Like I, like he knows his stuff. So one thing that coach Coop said to me though, when he left was, Whoever that new coach is coming in, watch out for Makai because he knows his stuff. He's smart. So I'm I'm grateful for the time he had with him. And Coach Coop was one of those coaches that really developed Makai, just like he did with Jesse Matthews and the other kids that were walk-ons at his scholarship. So um, I'm hoping that he makes him proud. Yeah. Did Did you just break more news that there's another shot coming to San Diego State? Did I, did I get that right? <laughs> he is it. He is. So Makai... <laughs> Makai's brother is currently at USD as a running right. back. Running back. Um, That's right. That's right. That's right. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So maybe. And then there is another Shaw in the ranks. He's a junior at Scripps. So, so I've been hearing stories <laughs> about this ta great tailgate at Snake Dragon Stadium that you and your family put on. <laughs> uh, Paul. Bro, Paul, you got to get an invite. I'm telling you, you got to get an invite. I, I, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Why is it important for for you and the family to be there and to show support and have uh, that big gathering? So we have a ton of friends that are alumni from SDSU. And although my husband and I didn't graduate from SDSU, I went to UCSD. My husband went to Long Beach State, but I'm <laughs> what UCSD is that what you're? Yeah. <laughs> Tritons. So I actually was born and raised in San Diego. My husband was born and raised in San Diego. My parents went to Sweetwater High. Uh, my husband's parents went to Lincoln. So we have ties here in San Diego. So we're huge SDSU fans. And we actually started going to SDSU when Makai was probably like eight, like the games. And we have pictures of him and other friends that would go with 
um, other friends. They arranged Pop Warner nights at SDSU games. We have a ton of friends that are alumni. We just feel it's important to go out there and support the kids. I mean, they're kids, but they're adults. But we feel like family support and friend support is phenomenal for them. And even when they're, you know, win or lose, it's, you know, you get all these people talking trash and it's terrible, but we're here for them regardless, regardless. And all of our friends do, they all support him and all the other players on the team, especially the local ones. So yes. And yes, you are always welcome to join our tailgates. We always go out five hours before yellow lot. Nice. We've kind of changed it up every, every game on which location in the yellow lot, but we do, we do big things. Shout out to Robert Hassan, who uh, we, him and I, we, we throw down the tailgates. So yeah. It, it, it's impressive. So, I mean, how does, how does, <laughs> How does this work? I mean, so Jalen's at USD. Uh-huh. I, I, where's the tailgate? I have for no that idea. I, 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 I don't. That has, there's no plan. That's a good question. There is no tailgate for USD. We have to divide and conquer. Jalen's <laughs> games are probably going to be at one at one o'clock. And right. I'm going to tell you, it depends. Jalen's just coming into his sophomore year. Makai's right. coming into his senior year. So, unfortunately, Jalen precedent is is to your brother who's a senior (laughs) Uh, (laughs) thankfully our younger son's games are on friday nights right um so we'll have to see well i mean i don't know we'll have to see but jalen is a huge supporter of his brother he came to the spring ball game he's come to games and tailgates so yeah we we love it all that's great um yeah okay but here's a little harder question your son is now a public figure right Uh he he is a starter um d1 program scholarship athlete and and with that comes the trolls, social media, people saying all kinds of stuff, things like that. I mean, how do you as a parent handle your child as a public figure and kind of getting the ugly part of our society kind of directed to him? So I have to tell you, I was a part of the Facebook SDSU fan page and I had to remove myself. Yeah. Um, I found it was I found it was difficult to kind of hold my tongue and one of the other moms I'm pretty sure it may have been it was mm-hmm. Michael Shaw it was Liz and yeah. I'm pretty sure she messaged me early in the season and she was like you can't talk to them and at yeah. that point I was like I just have to so I find that it's easiest for me if I just remove myself from everything and I focus on the positives of my son I get it people are gonna have their opinions about my son but they also didn't raise him Um, and none of the other boys on the SDSU team or the team, the way the team's coached. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know what? Like, I I mean, Makai has been playing football since he was five. So you get the same people complaining about the same stuff, but you also see those same people not coaching and you see the same people not having any idea what they're talking about with football. So you just kind of got to take it in stride and realize like, they don't know what not they don't know what they're talking about unless they have a background in coaching or they want to see themselves out there. It's to me, it's just okay, whatever. You're like, that's fine. Have your opinion about my child and about the rest of the team, but you didn't raise them, you don't coach them now. And if you, you know, I kind of think like opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one, right? <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Just like that. <laughs> well, okay. That's pretty yeah. much what it is. <laughs> Great perspective. Yeah. Great perspective. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I know when I, when I t- was texting you setting up this time, I uh, was jokingly said that I was going to try to get some dirt on you. And when you shot back that Makai had no dirt on you, uh, I viewed that as a challenge and, you know, want to get something, but, but he didn't. He said he, had, he said he had, he said he had nothing on you. I'm going to tell so, you why. Cause he knows better. Well, no, yeah, no. And this is what I was going to say, because throughout the entire um, segment about you, respect, appreciation, admiration just came across. And um, I got a 12 and 10 year old boy. So what's your secret? I uh, Yes, I've met. Which which one did I meet? You got you. You met them both. Um, only one. Oh, of them, I met them both. You got you met them both. And only one of them was brave enough to eat. Okay. And I, I, we, we had a good time with that the rest of the night. Cause I, I'm not buying you anything. You were at a tailgate. <laughs> People were hospitable to you and, and you decided that you wanted to throw a football around instead. They were anyway, awesome. I mean, tell, they were tell, both tell awesome. Me, thank you. Tell me what, I mean, what's your secret? How do you, how do you get a, you know, cause that's um, the fear that they're going to go to college. They're going to become teenagers and, and they're not going to have the respect and admiration that we saw so clearly from Makai describing you. And, and so give us some secrets, some tips. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know, like we've always instilled from a very young age that we are the, we're the parents and 
my kids have my kids, all of them, including, I mean, Makai is our oldest. They've never been bad kids. They've never talked back. They've never been in the principal's office. They've always just been super focused. And I don't know, like I've always tried to be very welcome. Like I, I kind of give them like the side eye when they were younger and just started young. Like, listen, I'm going to look at you wrong because you did something wrong, but you already know that's not how you should act. But I also was very open even now. Like, so Makai, we have, he has his two younger brothers, but we have a five-year-old daughter. So she's like the princess of everybody. Literally, she's like the queen. Makai is like the big older mean brother. Like he threatens any, any little boyfriends that she might have. It's actually pretty funny. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But we just, we always have instilled in, in a very young age that we're the parents and this is the way it goes. I don't know. It's just, it's hard to explain. And now, now that they're older, we try to make it just an open door policy. Listen, I was you one age. Don't try to get one over on me. And if I'm going to say something, I'm going to mean it. And if I'm going to discipline you, I'm going to mean it. And I'm not going to, there are consequences and I'm not going to be that parent that's going to take away something and give it back to you in five minutes. And as much as it hurt, hurt us to discipline them, which was very rarely, it was one of those situations where if I'm going to stick with my word, I'm going to stick with it, but I'm not going to come back on my word and all of a sudden be like, oh no, I feel bad. It was just, that's tough. That's tough shit. That's life. And now, now I just want to make sure they know I have an open door policy. I was your age at one time. You can come talk to me about anything. Like I'm never going to be mad. I'd rather you come talk to me and be open about it than to lie to me because that's kind of how my parents raised me. My parents always raised me with, and I got in trouble when I was younger a lot. And it was one of those things, yeah, right? It was when I got granted for a summer. Yeah. Don't lie to me because I'll always find out. And I always used to tell, I tell my boys that, especially all of them. Don't ever lie to me about anything because I'm always going to find out. And then once you find out, it's going to be worse that I found out than if you would just tell me the truth to begin with. So, yeah. Cool. cool. Makai doesn't seem like the type of guy that I would ever have gotten in trouble. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Never, (laughs) never, ever, ever, ever. Yes, he's got his little attitude issues with me. You know, like I'm the annoying mom. Let's turn off the light off, put deodorant on, brush your teeth, blah, blah, blah. But as far as getting in trouble with people, with school, always been a straight A student. I mean, he's phenomenal at school. He's got a science brain, math brain, but he's never one to talk back to anyone. No, I don't think he's ever talked back to me now that I think about it. But he's yeah he's he's not a, he's not that kind of kid so it's kind of weird. That's a, you know it, it, it's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. He's a good Lo- kid. Good kid. Lots of parents like Paul um, aim to have their kids become D one athletes. So what is one thing about that process that might help others? Huh. Kind of don't give up. Don't yeah. ever give up. But I also am a big advocate for don't push your kids to do things they don't want to do. I feel that it's a safety issue, number one. And I feel that they really lose their love for things if you're trying to get them to do something that they really don't want to do. If they decide at a, an age, whether it's high school, middle school, early college, and they're like, hey, you know what? I really lost the love for this. I don't want to do this anymore. Don't don't make them do it. Let them be happy. Let them let them do what they want to do. And it's whatever they want to do is going to make them happy. And it's going to, ex- it's going to, ex- whatever makes them happy sports wise or in college, that's what they're going to excel at. Whether it's sports, whether it's science, whether it's studying English, whether it's intern, you know, doing an internship. So division one is hard. It's, it was a roller coaster for us. And you know, Makai really only had two offers. He had an offer from Reno and an offer from SDSU. He had a bunch of Division three offers, and it was hard. You know, he sent out a bunch of emails, a bunch of film, and him hurting hurting himself his junior year with a fractured clavicle really hurt him. And he also didn't pass the eye test. He was one of those kids. He was 5'8", 150 pounds when he was a junior, and he didn't pass the eye test. And then you would get him, and you would see his dad, who's 6'3", 220 pounds, and coaches would be like, oh, wait a second this kid could have potential. And, you know, all all I think is for me, I don't remember who it was that told me, but somebody told me all it just takes is one coach to say yes. And coach Sumler was the coach that said yes to Makai. And then it transferred into coach Coop because he was recruited as a corner first. And it just takes one coach and all they need is a chance. So I would absolutely say, don't ever give up um, if that's what they really want to do. But if they 
don't want to do it anymore, don't push them to do it. They're not going to excel at something they don't want to do. Absolutely. We you mentioned earlier about how you guys have been going to FCSU games. You're following uh, since Makai was a kid. Just that from a football sense, you know, this last year was not that great of a season for San Diego State. Well, how do you look at this year's team and this upcoming season and how what kind of success they could have? So I think this season, um, I'm really excited to see Moose see what he's got. I think that, you know, he was kind of thrown into the mix of things at the last minute uh, unexpectedly. And he performed the way any, he, he performed better than anybody could have ever asked somebody in that position. Right. I mean, you have somebody who was a quarterback then a safety and now you're back at quarterback within a week and he did what he needed to do with the weapons he had. And they just didn't have time. Um, you know, it was mid season. Right. So I know that we lost, I know that we lost a lot of players on the O-line and D-line and that our O-line and D-line now are young. Um, I think they have a lot of growth um, from what I've seen, um, but I think they have potential. And um, I know that our depth chart on our running backs is crazy. Um, we actually, Makai ran track with Keenan Kristen. Um, so we know the family personally, and I'm excited to see what he can do. So I think it'll be a good year. I think it's, we've got a couple tough games, especially in the beginning of the season. I mean, it kind of makes or breaks the team. It makes them better to play against opponents that might be better than you. It just makes you a better team and figure out what you did wrong and what you need to make better. All right. So I got a series of questions for you. Just rapid fire, quick ones. You know, okay. what is, All right. what, what, what's your favorite food? Uh, type of food or like a dish? Both. Uh, Mexican. And now that, where do you, where do you enjoy getting Mexican food? Okay, and so your, tailgate's you ask, a, your tailgate's you, a fair if, answer. That's right. what we had that. So eat. if if you ask Makai this, he would say the taco shop up the street from the house because I would always used to text him, do you want anything from the taco shop? Yes, carne asada fries with sour cream and cheese only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Um, what about your favorite movie or TV show? Friends. 100%. I, I haven't 100%. seen a movie and I don't know how long except unless it's a Disney movie. I don't know. Because I have a five-year-old, so Moana. <laughs> <laughs> all day, all day. Um, yeah, no, I'm in that world too. I'm in that world too. Right? Uh, yeah, no, and you, you're just you're beyond thrilled when, for whatever reason, they bring Ratatouille or something that isn't in the normal <laughs> script back into the thing, and you're just like, it's such a breath of fresh air to not see whatever I know, you know the five yes. movies they watch are. Uh, right. Musical artist or group? Oh my god, musical artist or group? I don't know. I don't, I mean, the stuff okay is okay now a days, but I mean, I really like like old school R and B. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Old school I like, like Jodeci, F, J- Jodeci, SWV, like Janet Jackson, like all the stuff that I grew up with in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. I may be dating myself, but I mean, if I, I have an I, almost I, 21 year old, you already know how old <laughs> I must be. <laughs> right. I, I was going to say, I hate that that's old school. I, uh, I was right. Exactly. I, know, I was right there with you with all of it. I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That's really good too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, pretty much. A <laughs> couple more questions. Um, you know, mother's day is here. Uh, do you have like a favorite memory of, of a mother's day, um, <laughs> or, you know, a spe- specific moment, um, a, a gift, you know, something like that. I think it was a couple of years ago and my kids actually finally went out and got me something like they actually gave me, wrote me cards and what did Makai get me? And I thought it was like the most useless thing ever. I really did. I was great. like, what is, I was like, what is this? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe it was my husband that got it for me. I don't remember. It was something. And I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Thanks for getting this for me. I'm never going to use this, but I don't remember what it is. That's how, that's how <laughs> important it was, right? That's how much I remembered it. It was so awesome. I remembered exactly what it was. Yeah. I think they all, I like the little homemade stuff. Just every year they would come home from school and have little homemade cards or like picture frames with my photo or something like that. Not one specific memory about Mother's Day. All right. Now we uh, gave Makai the opportunity to address a message for you. Yeah. Um, And since you're not, you're not going to hear this until Mother's Day, give you the same opportunity. Um, Oh my goodness. The the, the pod, the podcast is yours. Uh, What message would you like to give to your son? My message to you, Makai, is your mother. I was only 21 when I had you. I didn't know how to be a mom, and I was barely an adult myself. I didn't finish college. 
and you'll be 21 in just a few months. First off, don't have any babies right now. (laughs) You've made me so proud. I can't even describe it. You'll be the first one in our family to graduate with a college degree. That's between me, your father, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, everybody. And also with a degree in biology. Who does that? (laughs) All while playing football. You're such an important role model to your brothers and your sister and everybody around you. And you're such a joy to be around. You were a graduate during COVID. You didn't get a true graduation, grad night, prom. When you attended SDSU, you couldn't live on campus. You had to drive multiple times a day. And I know that it was a lot for practice, snacks, all while doing online learning. You'd get up and leave the house at 5 a.m. every day and wouldn't get home until 9 p.m. at night. As a walk-on, that truly is something special and shows your dedication to the program and what you do. I am so proud of the man that you've become, and I can't wait to see where this next path takes you. Regardless of wherever you end up, you will do great things and big things with your life. I love you so much, son. Thank you for making me a mom. Hmm. That was beautiful. Um, thank you. <laughs> like thank you're making you. me tear up now. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, just for making the time to 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 do this. Yes. And, um, lighting really is horrible. Forward to how all of it lo- works together for for the episode. Really appreciate. Yeah. It. yeah. I yeah. appreciate you guys. Thank you for thinking. That means a lot. It really does mean a lot. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to say. <laughs> Happy Mother's when Day. Is this? Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, you right. guys are always welcome at our tailgate. So, Paul, I got your number now. And Andre, I'll hit you guys up. And you guys are welcome anytime. We got big things in store for our tailgates this year. We're going to do Taco Man, probably Seafood Boil again, some Hawaiian food. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Nice. All right. Thank you, guys. Nice. There you have it. That was our interviews with Makai and Adria Shaw on our special Mother's Day episode. Everyone at the SDSU Football Podcast and the East Village Times wants to wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day. Hopefully your significant others and your children are treating you well on this uh, Sunday. We want to thank you guys for listening as always. Please make sure to Hit the subscribe button, like, follow, share, all of that good stuff on all of your favorite platforms. We appreciate you guys tuning in for each episode as we try to bring you interviews that we want, we think you would want to hear. We'll be back soon with uh, another episode talking to uh, some of the newer Aztecs who will be coming to the Mesa. So stay tuned for that. You are listening to the SDSU Football Podcast, presented by the East Village Times with your hosts, Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison.